Are you trying to figure out how to get things done? Are you trying to look for knowledge that can actually help you do something, be something, be better at what you do? Hi, I'm Joyce Mbaya, founder of ZD, where we provide affordable online courses for Africa. This is the place for you, the ZD Podcast, where we have inspiring conversations with amazing people. And the ultimate goal is to help you know more so you can do more. Welcome everyone to our podcast, to the ZD Podcast, the No More, Do More podcast, where over a few minutes, we just have pick a topic and we have a brainstorming session, have a discussion, hear people's ideas around it. So today, what we thought of having a discussion about is African innovation. And what I mean is almost the change of mindset so that Africans can believe that they can think a very different way, that they can be creative, they can be innovative, and how the narrative from history and the pressures from different life experiences, colonization, whatnot, has impacted how we perceive the world and thus how we're able to innovate and get new ideas and be creative and what have you. Uh, So hopefully I'm thinking... That's clear enough. Uh, so on the panel, of course, we have our OGs. Yeah, so yeah. We have... <laughs> <laughs> so we have our head of content, Kevin. Yeah, oh, do we just say Kabingu, 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 Kar- Kabingu. Kevin ah, yeah. has a bad connotation to it. So um, All right. Mr. Kabingu. Intr- introduce yourself. Yeah. Hi, guys. Um, I'm, I'm happy to be back on another episode. Um, Mr. Kev- oh, no, Mr. Kabingu Karanja. And I'm the head of content at ZD. And um, yeah, I'm happy to be here. Woo! Applause! Yeah, 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 yeah. Our next OG, Mr. Ontomwa. Mr. Ontomwa himself. Yeah, so I'm uh, Bonface Ontomwa. I'm the project manager ZD. <laughs> Not the pastor. <laughs> yeah, as well, I do... Uh, minister to people on the side. So very excited, of course, to be with you again. Uh, we want to dig deep into this topic and see uh, what comes out. You never know. So uh, let's get it started. Yeah, yeah. Great. All right. Yeah. So as per the use, um, I mean, I've, I've basically mentioned the topic. So in terms of first thoughts, when somebody tells you about generally our mindset around creativity and innovation, Kevin, what do you think about? Pretty, um I, I kind of do think that a lot of what we do um, is we, we have a lot of it. We have a, a lot of creative ideas and creative approaches to things. But uh, our problem is we kind of have an inferiority complex when mm. it comes to yeah the things we, we do. We don't. Yeah, because the world has always been telling us um, it's like we are backward. We are not ad- as advanced as uh, many other nations or other peoples. So, in a way, even in ourselves, inherently, we have that um, bias of, yeah, um, like I'm doing this, but I think someone else, maybe in Europe or Asia, could could be doing something um, better than I am. So we we are always the our biggest critic, and yeah, I I think yeah we should like um, change that mindset in a way. Oh, cool, Boneface! Before we dive in. <laughs> Yours, your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I, I want to echo what Kevin has said. Uh, the, the challenge that we have, that we are facing currently, for me, uh, even in support of what Kevin has said, has to do with that identity crisis. Mm. Uh, because for you to be a creator, you have to know that you are a creator, that you can produce something. But now we have that this syndrome of... Uh, the white man being supreme over us. And so then we don't take advantage of the creative juices that we have in us. So we don't take uh, that step, that brave, courageous step to go ahead and say, you know what, we can create something meaningful. And most of the time, you also find that we're focused more on what we don't have instead of looking at what we have and see what can we produce from this small thing that we have? And if you look at, uh, for example, in Pesa, it's a creation of uh, African man, a black man that is now gone global. 
that they're trying they're to figure them. out because how, exactly. how, how, how is this working? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And if you sat down with that guy, you will be, I know for sure that his identity is intact. He knows that if, before he, he even created this thing, he knew that he would produce something mag- magnificent. So for me, mm. I think if we can sort out this issue of identity, like believe in ourselves that we can produce something, that we have whatever is required look at uh, congo for example yeah it has one of, yeah it, like the resources there are incredible yeah but now there's the issue of identifying yourself and the the white man uses uh, look for example at uh, uh, the middle east uh, israel look at dubai at desert place and they have done some incredible things so it's not about what we don't have uh, it's about taking advantage of what we have. And for me now, as I end, I agree with Kevin that it has to do with our identity. We have to identify ourselves that we have that ability to create also. Mm, agreed and agreed. So, you know what, when you, when you talked about it, I think the key thing that stood out for me is, I mean, that identity thing is such a big deal. Um, and I agree with all of you because it's it's that thing that you've, we we have been taught or rather we've been cultured to be consumers and not producers. And that that's whole rounded when it comes to every part of industry, generally how we live our lives, um, which is why for the longest time, I think other than the Makamani, you know, for the longest time, it was just, you'd watch all the Western shows and the Mexican shows. At least now, I think in the last 10 years, with that whole shift where now we have local TV stations, we have um, a whole spa of local radio stations. So I feel like we're slowly starting to get that back. But I definitely see how these were remnants of colonialism, where I think a really great example is how we, we were, I mean, African culture is so rich. Right, I think the thing that really caught us is how it was passed down orally, <laughs> and I, I we'll have a whole discussion about the wiping away of language mm-hmm. as a form of mm-hmm. destroying history and how our history is passed down. Um, but the thing is, you were walking barefoot. You know, you had there was such a clear understanding between the balance between your resources, like the natural environment versus how you did things, the respect for mm-hmm. each other. And what have you? And then colonialism happened. So things like our parents, like guys used to walk barefoot and whatnot, and were considered primitive. You know, um, these guys ride in cars like their chickens and whatnot. Their animals, the way they interact with animals, and it was all just considered were called called primitive, right? Nope. And now then called, uh, uh, emotional support animals. Uh-huh. And then now, mm-hmm. hundreds of years later when research is coming out that says it's actually good for you to walk barefoot, the benefits of this and that, and how they now have emotional support animals. So things that they called primitive for us for hundreds of years, they now begin to embrace. Um, So what happened when colonialism happened? And I don't blame everything on colonialism, but we have to be, we have to keep history in mind because we can't just say that it didn't exist and didn't have an effect. It did. So let me give you a really good example is, um, so, and let me give the example for language. So we're having this conversation with my mom and I was talking about how, uh, how for me, like my mom, my mom can speak Kiswahili, Kamba, Kikuyu, English. She can speak several languages. And I was asking her mom, like, why didn't you guys teach us how to speak Kiswahili, like not Kiswahili, how to do Kamba or Kikuyu, you know? Uh, and she was saying in those days, what she was saying, this is what we knew for us. What we were told is helping our children is making sure that they're able to speak English. That was the baseline of them, of you being a good parent. And that means you're passing down something for your kids is making sure that they're very, very good in terms of English. 
So we'd go to school and everything, English, Kiswahili, come home, it's English, Kiswahili. Of course, you can listen to your mother tongue because they use it. But in terms of speaking, you're never really encouraged to speak it because you would take your children to the village and they'd be speaking English and people would be like, whoa, wow, like, wow, it's amazing. It's a point of pride for them. But for us as a new generation, we feel the gap because I feel like it's so amazing that one minute you're speaking one language and then you jump into your mother tongue. Yeah. And I think it's so amazing And some things cannot be duplicated Like you cannot do a complete translation It loses mm-hmm. something in translation And I was just talking about how That it's like Something was taken away from us That we're trying to reclaim So me I'm always like let me kids will learn they learn um, the history of the country. Guys, let me tell you I did not know anything about African history until I was in campus Doing oh, yeah, African did, philosophy did. Mm. I did I didn't even know like about Luanda. I did I if you ask me about Kenyan folklore, I have no idea. I have like it's something that I started learning in adulthood. Ask me about your East, Eastern European history, I'll tell you everything. Yeah. Ask me about um it we didn't even call it colonialism, we call it imperialism. I know everything about that. So it's almost like the way we were we're conditioned to now think about things is is really you're put in this box where things that are amazing and we're probably rediscovering now were lost because we were told that it is primitive, that it is inferior. Where if somebody has like an accent, you snicker and you laugh, but really that person can speak several languages, which is why they have an accent. It's actually a good thing, not it's not a bad thing to laugh at. Um, so I think the main for me it comes down to we were culturally, and it comes from remnants of the colonialism, is we were taught that any form of differentiation and creativity is primitivity. Therefore, it's not valid. So just leave it alone. You don't have to. We'll, you just fit in the norm and be a consumers. Don't produce and don't create. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, that's initially my thought. I, I can talk for long. But anyways. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and uh-huh. also uh, in in line with what you're saying, like cultures, even African cultures, that people actually embrace their culture, how well they are doing. For instance, guys like Nigerians and how in they Tanzanians, embrace Tanzanians, yes, Tanzanians, yeah. So yeah, as they embrace their culture and say whatever we are doing is good enough to compete with, like mm-hmm. things in the like in the international stages, because mm. now you're seeing like Koreans are doing Afrobeat. Yes. Nigerians have made it so popular. Mm-hmm. Guys like Akina Diamond and all this, everything they are doing. So it's just um, like you guys are also saying is putting in us that mindset that whatever we can do, whatever we are able to do is is equally as good or as important as anything else every, anyone is doing in, in the rest of the world. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and also just to add something small there, First, there's some, Rhoda was talking about language, and there's a quote I had read. Uh, someone said, do not laugh at someone who speaks a broken second language, because mm-hmm. their first language, they are fluent in it. Mm-hmm. And there's no language that is superior to another one, right? Mm-hmm. But, but, but now, because we have uh, placed value on one language, and we have devalued another language, so then we despise those that speak that broken language that we have put value on it, which is not supposed to be the case. Mm. So, yeah, just to go on with what Kevin is saying, oh my God, I spoke that one, and then it, ah, there's this good point. Yeah, there's also there's something we had seen with uh, Eric Omondi. <laughs> I know maybe he was chasing clouds, I don't know, but uh, uh, I took something from it. There's uh, this movement he wanted to to launch to start you remember when he was going to parliament he wanted to force a uh, legisla- uh, legislation to be put into place uh, dictating that media plays 70 percent of kenyan music mm-hmm. because yeah looking at the kenyan music as when you spoke about nigeria and tanzania we, we really have lost our ground we you can't listen to music and say that is kenyan music because it There's is no filled with sound. that Exactly. It, it has those copies from Tanzania. You have a copy from Nigeria. It's a mix of South Africa. It's a mix of all those uh, music. So we don't have that legit uh, thing like we say, this is Kenyan. 
And so uh, maybe it could be, uh, people say, uh, because Kenyan is like that hub of uh, Africa. Melting where points. They, exactly. Yeah. Where the, mm. the whites come in and then this is where they begin to erode fast. Like uh, people begin to change our culture because we really have changed our culture. You know, like Nairobi is like London. <laughs> the culture there has transformed completely. It's like you're living in a, another country. Even when you go to uh, other capital cities, you go to Lagos, uh, you go to uh, uh, Ghana, you go, to, you, you discover that Nairobi is really advanced. It's, it's almost like a Western uh, city. Mm. Yeah. yeah so, and I think, yeah, yeah mm. I think it's, it's not a bad thing. So mm. what I like to say is, of course, history taking hi- like history happens and whatnot. But my belief has always been the fact that the way we were all created different was for a reason. So we we all have such a unique contribution to have on humanity. Mm. Uh, So even I always say the world was meant to be a full mixture, full melting pot where Mm -hmm. um, Asian innovations, Western innovations, African innovations come to fill different gaps because you see the world in very different ways. And that should be something that's encouraged, you know. And I think the good thing with living in the day and age we're living in is this is becoming better. So Africans are beginning to dive back in and try and understand. Of course, we're we're, we're so different. And those differences, this is how we do things. This is how we understand the world. So you see music coming from there. You see, I mean, even the African startups, you see amazing innovations coming up because there are solutions that are tailored Mm -hmm. for, for a very unique group of people. But even in the uniqueness, there are things that are similar across board so that an innovation can be applicable in Africa, but it can also be applicable in Asia or in Europe somewhere, you know? So for me, I think... It's the the bad. The, I think the, the worst thing about what colonialism did is it created so many stars. Where now there's we we usually look at the differentiation, and then because of the history of it, now grandparents and our great grandparents, there's that lingering inferiority that needs to come from, and also just a release in terms of even the expectations we have for Western countries. You know, so I always think it's. You know, the way they say it starts with you. Imagine it starts with you, where as a culture, as a new generation, it's sitting down and saying, you know what? I have this wildly ridiculous, audacious dream, this amazing idea, and not being afraid of of speaking of it and trying to do it because you assume it's not fitting into a specific cultural norm. Um yeah, so that's def- that. My thoughts around that is just we have so many amazing ideas. And you remember how in those days when, if if you are not a doctor, you saw there's this meme where um, <laughs> if you're not a doc, there's four st- there's four top types of careers. There's doctor, doctor, lawyer, lawyer. Um, uh-huh. What is the other engineer. one? Engineer. Doctor, lawyer, engineer, and then disgraced the family. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, where for yeah. the longest time we were taught that if you are not following this formal this formal journey, you are basically a failure. So if you are like if you are a creative, please, there's no way you're making money from that. So the good thing is now we're in a world where those things are still treasured. Like if you're a doctor, engineer, and it's every even Asian culture, I think it's so prevalent. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, it's such a thing. But now is when people let me tell you guys, imagine you can if you're good at something, no matter how strange it is, if you're good at it, people will pay you for that. And that can become a career path. Um so I think that it's just the change of mindset and just embracing whether embrace your power and the fact that you have so much potential, you can do so much. It doesn't matter how you speak, how you sound, your educational background, your tribe, your race. You can imagine you can do it. Um, And it's, it's a full, you have to have like a full change of mindset and dig into your perceptions of where do these perceptions come from? Is it something that was passed on from my parents or my grandparents so that, and if you don't interrogate yourself, you're just believing business as usual. I call it business as usual where you're on autopilot and 
you don't realize that you are living your life based on specific perceptions but what are the roots of those perceptions and if you don't get to the root of those perceptions imagine you you can't you can't start having new brilliant out of the world ideas you can't decide to do something completely different you know you'll just be stuck doing the same thing and that's because you're following the same storyline because that's what has been passed on from generation to generation yeah and also on that a few points maybe uh, there's one about language there's something interesting i learned that every language usually has a way it like processes ideas Ooh. um like western languages are very direct it's like mm. the conversations are more i'm trying to destroy this other person in a way it's like mm. if you're having a, if you're having a, an argument dominance yeah yeah dominance i want my idea to be the the dominant one so uh-huh. yeah, yeah it's like um Yeah so it it was kind of that I think that was mostly English I think they were saying semitic languages are more circular in the way the 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 conversation happens it's it doesn't feel um more uh, direct or linear it's more a, a language of emphasis it's like the, uh, an, a good example is the sermon on the mount with Jesus it was happy other it's it's you are emphasizing things you emphasize so it's not like i'm 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 laying out like a, a an argument for the thing i'm saying it's uh, it's, it's not it's not as di- direct yeah it's not as direct it's, so it's yeah that's why, so that's why you yeah. see the bible has a lot of parables that's it how does. it does it yeah that's yeah, so, so interesting wow. uh huh and also i think Sp- spanish i forgot how the spanish language drug there's uh, a zigzag pattern oh. it's always our way people yeah so um the professor was saying he uh, the professor he was an american professor was talking about how he understands these differences when especially when he's teaching international students he understands um as a uh, as pa- in the spanish language the person will start maybe the argument with the solution then build oh. up My goodness like from the bugs so wow it's interesting so in a way he was saying all it's not that one idea is dominant it's, it also gives you a way to um to give different points of view and different ways in which we look at life I and existence and all that, that. Yeah. yeah also in some some cultures you find the language is is opposite like english we usually talk the future is in front of us and the past is behind us but some mm-hmm. languages is inverse the past is in front of us the future is behind us the past wow. is in front of us because we, we've already it's already happened we can we can see it the past because at uh, the future because you can't see it is behind us so you know it also affects how people um view like many their world view is so yes through that that's why you see different cultures have different approaches to how they carry out different things so that's that's one thing i, I understood the, in language the other wow. one so I, i was watching a series called watchmen and huh? i i had a really good rock song from the 70s and yeah. i went to search for the song and I, uh-huh. i found that the song was from Z- Z- zambia oh. the song was from zambia from the 70s uh-huh. was like yeah, yeah. zambian music it's like those 70s um rock and roll yeah from americas like oh, yeah, any used to do this thing wow so capital the band was called which but eh. they had it was like they had such good music like it's at part as what to get some guys like akina jimi hendrix were doing nanini but we didn't know about it and the reason why it was in the hbo series was mm. cuz some some guys from i think some guys from america had maybe one of the songs and went to zambia and looked for those individual musicians and started wow. buying rights, rights for those songs so still wow. the guys they sold it but the guys who are benefiting the most are the the oh. americans the, yeah. so yeah, they realized was, the value yeah the value of that song and these guys were just like uh some poor guys around like a village who are being interviewed Whoa. talking about the good old days when it was oh just after colonial, colonization was done 
um guys were starting to make a little bit more money these guys could start making money from music and all that so that's when they were make they were getting inspiration from the music that was coming from the west just like us in, and the the interesting thing was these guys you know where they were coming to record this music in nairobi yeah. Nairobi was a hub. It was a hub. Yes. Wow. So you go down that rabbit hole. You see, also Nairobi, even if you look like Zilis Openwa or Zilis Openwa, yeah, is we would we also had a golden age. But we did, we did. The problem for us though was um, the Punini Akina Moi and. Because the the musicians are criticizing the government, yeah. All that. So there was always this push to banning radio stations that are playing music that's criticizing the government, mm. and it also you see that also stifles the growth of our music. So in a way, also the reason why we are also here is because our own leaders and politicians also kind of killed the the industry for mm. us. So mm. it's like we are starting to like. figure out what our sound is once yeah. again we and, are and it's interesting yeah yeah and mm-hmm. uh, that's why you see um a very catchy song even um akina yes akina sauti soul are doing well mm. but you'll find guys like akina sailors those gangeton guys when yeah. they upload their music it gets a lot of views mm. and a lot of people um keep criticizing it as why like that's that music is trash it um it's bad but but you should sure does well <laughs> it that one it does well and um, yeah. the second part is i feel like you need to let these young kids experiment yes so, yeah. cuz through that is when your sound that's when you discover your it. sound yeah. mm. so just leave them don't um yeah don't like criticize them or anything just to add to a small thing to what Kevin has said and it, it has really hit me hard uh, we see our world through our mind not through our eyes right it's through the the beliefs we have is through the mindset that we have and this is why when you see uh, most people even Kenyans we can give an example when they leave the country and go to the west the united states you see them do big things uh when you talk to them you you wonder who is this person like their mindset is completely changed it's not the same way we think like i have a friend of mine we completed high school together he went to the states uh the other day he came he constructed a road at their hometown like in tamak did right wow. and for me i'm thinking that is not my work that is the work of uh my <laughs> the it's, the, it's the county government <laughs> exactly. job <laughs> but you see those guys don't think like that and it's about yeah. that mindset is like i can do this as rodney yes. would say if, yeah. if we can believe that we can do this you know what i i would get money i would tarmac up my road i don't have to wait for my mca to do that and i think it starts from there then now someone goes to become what an inventor you see we it's would give them hmm, because it starts most of us don't important. even think most exactly. of us don't even think about that like i i create Imagine. something start thinking about this something uh-huh. like patenting that thing uh-huh. i p mm-hmm. all that yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> at least it's only music because it's more mainstream but a lot of things you don't think we, we, like recently we one or yeah. i was seeing uh-huh. mama boga how they usually catch the <laughs> boga and i was like if i could invent something that helps people to cut this mboga and patent it and start yeah. selling it. It yeah. starts like, from yeah. there, you see. Yeah. It does. Aki, you've you've made such excellent points on face. So it's it's very hilarious. So what I always <laughs> say is, you see, the example you're giving of that guy is the power of exposure because exposure forces you to open your mind to new realities that you would not have experienced if you were just in your own the same town you've been in and what not and before it was difficult because you had to go places you had to fly places to experience this exposure but imagine we live in an age of such high connectivity 
that at a click of a button, I can do a virtual tour of Rome. I can learn Egyptian history. I can learn different languages. I can watch different filmmaking tactics. I can see how startups in Silicon Valley are starting their businesses up. I can see how they validate their customers. I can I can watch movies. I can watch Portuguese movies. I can watch Brazilian movies. I, I can just, you literally have the world at the end, like on your fingertips. fingertips. So you don't have to travel to experience exposure. Read a book, read an article, watch uh-huh. a documentary on YouTube. Because mm. what that does, and I think it's really great to live in this age is, Whereas before you actually had to go somewhere to discover that, you know what, if this is possible here and these are people just like me, living life just like me, that can also apply from my home, from my village. I can come home and I can create something that can make a difference. So I think Mm -hmm. the power of technology is if you do that and you get that exposure, then it opens up your mind and now you can realize, hey, imagine I can do this, I can do that, I can do this. Which is why I'm so, I'm so, I'm so passionate about African innovation. African innovation because we have, we're sitting on such brilliance, just that people are not, I don't know why that, sometimes it's just it doesn't it's click, just, it doesn't it's click. It's just the like ignorance. ignorance. Yeah. And sometimes you, you then they ign- you, 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 anything. Exactly. So you don't try. You don't try to learn new things. Whereas you have accessibility to be able to do this. I mean, of course, accessibility means you have a, a, a large percentage is they have access to smartphones and stuff. Data is also a question in terms of exposure. But you have a, a healthy population that has access to internet now. Even if it's just like a 10 and B to go on YouTube and watch something new. It's, it's for them to... It's two layers. It's first to believe that mm. you can do it. Like you de- you deserve something more. Mm. And when you believe that you deserve something more, you can go and discover new things and do more things. So sometimes the comfort is if you find somebody in rural village, what they're thinking about is I just want to farm and then I'll get married to my neighbor and have kids and then the cycle just continues. But if yeah. that person was to meet somebody who they've probably come from the city and they're talking about these amazing things they're doing, then it plants a small seed and then that seed grows into something else. Mm. Yeah. So I yeah. feel like if With those farmers, mm. even the way the those things like the milk circles came up, you see yes. uh, just a bunch of farmers who yeah, came together. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, and Exactly. And believing your own power. I think it's it's that thing of self belief, by the way, that I did like I seeing understanding who you are and believing that you are capable, you deserve it, and you are able to do all of these amazing amazing things. It's not just limited to a specific group of people. So I feel like exposure can do that. And of course not everybody has exposure, but with technology it's more rampant than it would have been years ago. Personally, especially for me, it's like after my universities when I felt like I started really doing what I wanted to do, but I would have saved. You're so like, take a degree, time. take that yeah, degree. Yeah, yeah. Actually, that's I re- <laughs> now I, I can remember, live my life. I remember having that conversation with my mom, and I I honestly told her uh, after I finish, I'll give you that degree because that's for you. I. But for me, there's what I want to do. And yeah. st- I feel like if um, I'd started doing these things at a, an earlier age, I'd, I've mm-hmm. saved so much time. But so now much I'm com- time, yeah. yeah. So I'm compensating for all that. So I have to learn and then get to... Yeah, these years, um, have to comp- compensate for the years I lost. Mm. So, but I yeah. think the thing is, you started. I think yeah, I started. regardless of when you start, you start. So for, yeah. for all those who are wondering, Kevin did... Kevin, was it food science? What? Yeah. He did food science. Meanwhile, he is content... Head of content for ZD. He creates the most amazing visual... I, I don't even know how to describe it. He's like a, he's like an African filmmaker mean, meets instructional design, meets, meets magic content creation. <laughs> and all of this is self-taught. He didn't go to school for this. And I think you're the best example of this, Kevin. 
And yes. one thing I would say, the problem with one of the permeating cultural norms that really drives me crazy is we were taught to, they call it kuvumilia, like yeah. just surviving. Like you're taught that if it's not, like if it's not broken, I mean, like, even, and even if it's broken, survive, like just tolerate. That's the word. Yeah. Tolerate push it. Push through. Yeah. Survive. Tolerate. Push through. Which yeah. means, so where innovation comes from, innovation comes from seeing a problem or a challenge and then getting creative ways to overcome that in whichever way and form you are talented in which to do it. But if you are, if you are taught tolerance and never really questioning things, then you don't see the problem because the problem isn't really something to be solved. It's something to be survived. So you just go through it and you never really create solutions. Mm. And that raising hand thing we, we always talk in about school, in school. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> And we'll talk about that thing before I move on. Yeah, well, so it's, uh, <laughs> that's how in African schools you're conditioned to... Um, it's like when you raise your hand and give a wrong answer, it's like frowned upon. It's like mm. you get a punishment for being wrong. So mm-hmm. you learn not to try. Mm. Yeah, yeah, so if you, mm. is it like if, you, if you get wrong answers in maths, I know I'm going to be bokongapi. I don't know if they do that anymore. <laughs> I don't like, think yeah. they do that anymore. <laughs> <They don't, yeah. laughs> So it's like failure is punished. So you, it's like you're conditioning these kids to never try because I know never be wrong, that, never fail, yeah, never never fail. Yeah. Mm. So there are huge consequences to failure. Yeah. It's psychological. Mm. Actually, we can talk about so many things, guy. <laughs> yeah. The, the, someone was saying sometimes there's um, there's uh, there's an advantage to how to having that ignorance of it's like when you're too smart for your own good you mm. see all the possibilities <laughs> possibilities of something so you yeah. never want to try it but someone who's not that smart might just be trying everything and mm-hmm. it's like when you're throwing mud at a wall some will stick yeah <laughs> that's why they, that's why they, they say guys who have very i don't know if it's the same but guys who have very high iqs Usually yeah. don't do that well in life because they rarely try because they you, see all you the get overwhelmed because you see all of it. <gasps> wow, yeah. that thing of being allowed to fail also. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. my yeah. god. So yeah. If I don't know, if I don't know, the next step is maybe a, a huge pothole. Mm. I'll just go in. You'll go and then, and then you'll fall yeah. in and then you'll figure out how to crawl out of the pothole. Yeah. But yeah. if you know it's there, you won't go. <laughs> don't go. Yeah. So. It's, I think the whole thing we've been talking about is that just changing. It's one changing the mindset of um, our kids, us, um, yeah. everyone, and also en- uh, encouraging them to fail and also appreciating what we have. Mm. We should stop teaching kids. The white man is the one who discovered Lake Victoria and Lake Turukana. The white man is the one who so many things you are taught you you're usually shown like there was no significant contribution to the africans who are in this nation before these white people came so it's like oh we can't do anything look at history we never did anything so it's like telling them to change that idea of yeah yeah and that's so that's so true greg so now let as i tie it now to say that whole element of of innovation and creativity, mm. especially see in business and the startup space in Africa, is um, so be, because you already see. So you might see the problems, but then if you are too afraid to try, or you just you'll survive through it, and you've never died before, so you don't do anything. What happens is um, a European will come because their market has evolved to a level where they had seen these problems like decades, almost centuries ago Mm -hmm. and created solutions for them so that they're no longer a problem, but they're still a prevalent problem here. So if you, as say an African can see this problem yet, for you, it's not really a problem. It's more something to just ignore and move through rather than create a solution. That's why we have a large percentage of expatriates who come to visit Kenya or Africa and they realize, wow, my God, 
this is not being done here uh innovation creativity that's focusing on the african audience and get a million dollars worth of funding because and sometimes i think there's a balance between because sometimes africans will draw up and say oh it's so delicious i can't believe that they're coming and doing this and then they're getting this money but at the same time it's because they saw the problem and and decided i want to try and create a solution for this and it worked so now they got a huge amount of funding and don't even take me into the level of funding and like the different biases but it's it's that thing of what is the differentiation the differentiation is seeing a problem becoming creative about solving that problem and then taking the chance and not being afraid to take the chance and fail yeah that conditioning that we have of being taught not to fail is such a problem and also just vumilia hold on tolerate you know you just hold on a little bit longer you know where you're taught that nobody's i think i've never been told that have you ever sat down and then you're told you you can work hard and like build a billion dollar business or like be a billionaire other than I in the rap in the rap songs <laughs> <laughs> no is it an imagine like i've never even i've it, never even thought of having yeah. a billion dollar like company yeah you see yeah. and it's because you you it basically what you're taught is dream small because you can do this don't try and do those other things let people, other people do these things you just do this yeah. as long as you have food in your belly you know and you have a roof over your head you're okay your family is taking care of yeah and yeah. that that short changes the world so much because there's so many people who if they if they followed that drive and that dream we would have amazing products that make our life easier that change the world but you are taught to dream small you're taught not to take the risk you're taught to tolerate you know not fail don't ask questions put your hand down yeah so i feel like yeah. that is if we start changing which is really i can make kids will be i can make kids will do what hey <laughs> let me tell you they i they'll just be doing they can they can do whatever they want expose them to everything and then see what they're good at and encourage it regardless of how strange it might be because that's where these amazing things come from the guy who did the telephone you think if you had told guys you can be able to talk from this side to that side if you had told them like before he had started building up the think you you think you're crazy like wifi how do you describe yeah, I, I, wifi I, 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 and you can, you can even see the evolution of things it's like you remember how your kids you you learned that when you get two cups you put a kawaya and talk from yes the and talk and then listen you yes can hear so you see the evolution of that if these kids continue say i, I want to make this more advanced i want to yes. get through father and father you see how a telephone gets to be made mm. But yeah, for us is yeah. So we make sure that now we come back and go meet up boy. Sasa, why are you playing with me? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're beaten for it, for playing with those things. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, yeah, what yeah. Jordan Peterson talks about. Uh, do not, mm. do not, do not disturb children when they are playing. Is it when they are playing responsibly? At if you can ah, when they not, they are. Uh, uh, playing is it uh, accidentally but in a safe way <laughs> something yeah, like it's, that yeah it's it's yeah it's it, you can tell you can weigh if it yes there's a danger but mm. i can see um it won't harm him as much i don't know if that makes sense but it does, it let does. Them, yeah, yeah test those limits we have now because we have discussed a lot about mindset and uh and beliefs and for me i think one key point and uh, one key takeaway from uh, this discussion is we have to move from consumerism to uh, uh, innovativity like we become now creative for example i can give a story one time elon musk was uh, in traffic and uh, you know he got stuck there i think he had stayed there for four hours and so he began to think about a way he could design vehicles that could just move through traffic so that it can ease the traffic of the city now you know when i had that story i, I laughed because i know most of us when we get stuck in traffic we're thinking about uh what is on the radio what's on social media 
we never have that creative mind to think about how can I invent a system to to help uh, ease this problem. You see, we are never solution minded. We we just want to consume. And also another powerful thing is, uh, I think we need to normalize self doubt. Because uh, if you are a creative, you're going to deal with uh, a self doubt in one in one time or the other. More so when it, the project takes longer. Uh, there are those uh, seasons, and if we can normalize our self doubt, what will happen is then people will stop uh, uh, giving up because they will know that it's normal. It's normal uh, as you work on your creative journey to doubt yourself as you are coming up with that project. Mm. It's normal sometimes to go through those emotions. Mm. So don't give up. Just mm. continue. Push through uh, that 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 time that period. And I think if we can also take those two points about consumerism and also self-doubt, I think they will mm-hmm. help us in transforming our mindset to create more. Yeah. Hey, hey that's a good yeah, point. Hey, 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 hey. We. Yeah. So um, on that also, it's um, sometimes we also have to like be comfortable with also being the first ones and it's like being Moses showing people the way oh, uh, that's brilliant yeah. fantastic so we have to we have to wrap up now although we need to do like a part two of this so many things to say <laughs> but i think i think you you I, i don't i don't really don't have any final any final thoughts i think i've already talked about it just a change a change of mindset and perceptions would be it will be the beginning of the change that we need um yeah and that's it this week's episode has come to an end but the fun doesn't have to stop here if you have any questions suggestions or feedback head over right now to twitter and facebook and like and share comment get involved let us know what you think what you want to learn next and join us next time <laughs>